Hello and welcome to our next episode here at uh, Raw Talk. So today I'm joined by Nire and we are going to talk about TRE, Tension and Trauma Releasing Exercises, which is a wonderful modality that I'm becoming a trainer within. And uh, I've been working with this for the last couple of four years now, and it's had many benefits for me. So that's what we're going to share a little bit more about today. But I'm going to let you introduce yourself before we get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> so welcome. Awesome. Thanks so much, Simba. Um, great to be here. Um, my name is Marae Wagner, and I'm a functional medicine and nutrition coach. And I work mostly with clients who have some sort of chronic symptom and have been struggling to resolve these over many years. And, you know, I stumbled across your work through experiencing as well my, my um, experiences with clients that there, there's a subset of clients that no matter how much clinical work they do, they just hit kind of um, a ceiling with the progress that they make. And it was always my sense that the deeper work was necessary, the, the emotional issues, the nervous system issues, and, and, you know, just moving out what from I, you know, the t terminology I use is moving from the parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest mode, um, to be in that mode, rather than in the sympathetic mode, which is the fight or flight mode so yeah so um I'd love to share with everybody my experience that I had with you doing TRE sessions because I felt like to be able to um, sufficiently guide my clients through this kind of work or at least the understanding of its impact on our body's capacity to heal itself um, I wanted to go through this work myself. So I'm so grateful that I found you and Sarah um, and, and that I could go through the work myself. Beautiful, beautiful. And what would you say, like, initially coming into this, right? Because as, as we talked a little bit before we started this episode, you know, you tried a couple of modalities, which people usually do when you're a healer or when you're in the sphere, you kind of like going to a buffet, you know, I try a little bit of that, a little bit of that. What do you say that makes TRE different from other modalities that you tried initially as you start to practice it? I think it's a great question because I have tried many different modalities and a lot of the modalities kind of take you back into childhood to try and reconnect with the inner child and, and these kinds of things or maybe even reconnect you to the episodes where trauma might have happened in your life and you know I you know I'm open that I haven't had any big t trauma like I think a lot of my clients have had and so I was a little bit suspicious about what could this kind of work do for me if I've only got little t trauma you know maybe just never feeling like I'm good enough and having a critical mom or whatever it might have been and so I've I've tried those kinds of works, you know, going back. And what I love about TRE is that it's really just about being in the body. You don't have to go back to those feelings, dig up any past. It's just experiencing your body in the moment. And the amazing thing is that you get to feel the tremors. So it's a very physical feeling, whereas I often found in other um, emotional work, you're very much in your imagination and not so much in the body, at least. Sure, there's some breathing, but the tremors are just something that are, it's just way different than everything else I've done. Amazing, amazing. So, so why don't you explain to everybody, you know, what, how TRE works, how you came across it, and um, all about these tremors. Yeah, definitely. I uh, came across Thierry from a um, person that we're now friends, and, and but this person was coming in as a client. They wanted to do a consultation and know a little bit about what we do and what our center is all about. But I remember even from the beginning of this consultation, everyone that comes to us is like, I want to come for this. I want to fix that. You know, they come with a clear intention. And this person was kind of like, I want to meet and chat a little bit. And we were like, 
okay, like not that there's anything wrong with it, but we never had anyone come in for that reason. So I already knew that this will be a bit different. This consultation would be a bit different. And then we were talking for a while and, and then this girl mentioned TRE and I was like, what is that? I never heard of that. And then she started talking about it. And then I remember that I have actually heard about it during my massage training that I did 2011, that someone talked about, you know, it's a way to connect to your autonomic nervous system and, and essentially just bypass or not bypass, but just, you don't have to go to your memories. You don't have to go to your emotions to just drop into the body rather and let the body let go of any tension or stress that we have. Like you mentioned, it could be something that happened many years ago, or it can be something that's happening in today, you know, in your life today. But she was telling this story about how he came to be, you know, about the founder, Dr. David Berselli, that was studying people in a lot of distressed situations in war torn countries, but also law enforcement, but also corporate workers and athletes. And, and, and he, he got very fascinated by the fact that you know, whenever the human body is faced with a lot of stress, it kind of goes into a fetal position, either fully or gradually, and that it has an innate ability to shake. So you, you probably remember from school, you probably saw someone that were like flicking a pen or doing something and, and you're told off, don't do that. That's not good, you know, and that's just natural. We were born with it. So he was like, why do we try to override it? And, and how can we actually just reignite this tremoring mechanism? Because we already have it, right? CRE doesn't create the tremors. It's just a way of remind you of the amazing healing capacity that the body already has and how we can remember it and feel safe enough to further explore it and let that tremoring release the tension and stress that we have in the nervous system. And it's not just for humans, you know, this is for animals too. If you have an animal around, Know, Eastern Europe or New Year's Eve when there's fireworks, right? You see them shake, right? Mm -hmm. So all animals have that natural tremoring mechanism and it's just a way of letting go of stress and tension. So the founder really got into how can I teach this to people? How can I make it into a modality? And then he found the TRE with seven preliminary exercises to initiate this tremor together with the work of Stephen Porges in the polyvagal theory so we can understand what is it that actually happens, right? Like, if I ask you how you feel today, you probably say good, but your good and my good, you know, might be very different. So through the polyvagal theory, we learn how to use the language that both people can articulate and explain what what is what am I experiencing in my nervous system in terms of feeling safe, unsafe, present or not present today, and that's kind of what we put together as as modality for TRE and it's, yeah, it's spanned worldwide now. So it's in all major continents and it's been exposed to a lot of people. I actually don't know how many, but I last number I heard was around 2 million people worldwide that's been exposed to it. And it's really, really, really a outstanding healing modality. And it's so easy. I think that's the main thing that people really like about it. You know, it's, that's what fascinated me coming into it. Like what got me into TRE that it was like, you don't have to think about anything. You have to go to memory. You don't have to go to your emotions. You connect to your body and your body will take care of it. Right. And you don't even have to really understand, okay, is, is this shaking happening because someone bullied me in school? I don't know. And we don't have to it doesn't know. doesn't really matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You get the same result, right? You let go yeah. of attention. Yeah. yeah. So well, why don't you explain what the body's going through in these tremors? Can you, you know, from a from a practitioner's perspective, um, how is this helping clients release the stress and anxiety without getting too much into the technical details? Because look, I've experienced this myself. And I yeah, you know, I've been telling my clients the first time that we did our session, the very first session we did, you're like I track my sleep and I usually get like just under two hours, one hour, 40, one hour, 50 deep sleep. And that night after we did that first session, I got almost three hours of deep sleep. So that was a, for me, like a very measurable um, impact of calming my nervous system. I could really just sleep so much longer and deeper. 
for for that night so yeah i found it amazing <laughs> amazing yeah so we talk about pulsation when we teach tre right if you look at the whole body as a jellyfish right your body is not a jellyfish because we have bones we have muscles we have structure but if you kind of take that visual image of a jellyfish right Everything is fluid, like your lungs expand and they contract. So when your body, when we say the human organism, we need the entire body, when it's faced with a lot of stress, it usually contracts, right? But when the stress has passed, it's not always that we relax that contraction. We kind of keep a bit of that contraction in. So that doesn't allow you to fully breathe. That doesn't allow blood circulation to go as smooth as you could. It doesn't allow nerves to send signals to certain parts of your body, and it doesn't allow this, the sensations when you touch to travel back to the brain. So we are starting to block flow of blood, lymphatics, energy in your body. So what happens with the tremors is that we're actually going into the brain stem, which and and um, and the central nervous system through the spine. And we're actually initiating a sequence of movements that are involuntary, right? So it's not, it's not like I'm sitting in a squat position until my muscles get lactic acid, they have a, a lack of oxygen and they start to shake. No, this is systemic. This can be your tongue, this can be your eyes, this can be inside of your body, outside of your body. It's basically like you turn the body on to start to let go of all these tensions that I talked about. So it can move freely, right? So it will start to reorganize itself. So another example that I use uh, is kind of like, um, imagine a storage, storage container, like you have a storage container, right? And you just have stuff everywhere, right? It just looks very disorganized. But if you start to stack everything up, you realize, oh, there's a lot of space here. There's a lot of space here. And that's what happens when there's a lot of tension and stress in the nervous system everything gets a bit distorted and disorganized and what the tremors does it kind of helps you to restore put things back into order get circulation going makes us connect to certain body parts right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what you mentioned about the sleep it's really about the relaxation right that we allow ourselves to feel safe enough to relax because when we look at the uh, autonomic nervous system the automated nervous system that we have we can be relaxed but not connected to ourselves we can be relaxed because we're in a milder dissociation or kind of like a shock like uh, uh, state for instance you sit in front of a computer for a long time and after a while you're like oh wow i'm actually stiff in my shoulders i'm hungry i'm thirsty i need to go to the bathroom but where mind has overridden that capacity and that ability to feel our body because we're entered into something that's a bit dissociative because we're focusing so much in on a task. But you can still feel relaxed in that state. But you can also be relaxed in a connected state where you're aware. I'm relaxed and I've become aware early. Oh, I'm starting to get stiff in my shoulders. Let's do some stretches. Let's go to bathroom. Let's take some water. And then I continue a little bit. So that's a different kind of relaxation and body awareness that comes from a safe place. And the other one comes from a lack of safety, usually that we are starting to disconnect. So what it sounds like was that your body really went into that safe connected state and then it can fully relax and then you can sleep deeper, better focus, stress resilience goes up. The personal relationship usually becomes a lot better, right? Because we're able to see what's ours and what's someone else. So yeah, that's a big one, I think. Yeah, <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's your issue. You keep your thing. I'm quite good with mine. But okay, so for clients, that it sounds like, especially experiencing a lot of pain because of this constriction, as you were describing that, you know, there's not enough blood flow to certain parts of the body. And for me, a really big part, you spoke about polyvagal theory for people that don't understand is the vagus nerve is this nerve that goes from head all the way down to the, you know, through the rest of our body and importantly impacts our digestive system. 
And this is how that gut brain axis is so strongly connected. So if there's stress in the body or um, trauma in the brain, that that is going to impact our digestive system as well. So for me, I see this as a great way that even though my clients might be eating healthy and doing gut work, that if they their nervous system is stuck in this fight or flight mode, that they're still probably not going to be digesting food as well. And this is how, for me, it's so important to get them into this rest, digest mode, even if, and maybe you can speak to this, and because you've worked with quite a lot of clients doing this work is somebody that comes to you and say, I'm, I'm actually not really that stressed. I don't feel like I'm stressed. How can you speak to that shift in people where, you know, there's stress, stress that's really obvious for those people who have anxiety and all of that versus the people who, you know, they go on with their day and this is just normal for them. Yeah, that's how did very, they? How, what kind of shifts would they see? Yeah, definitely. That's a very good question, and part is understanding the autonomic nervous system seen through the lens of uh, what we said, the polyvagal theory. Um, so I'm gonna not go too tech into it, but just so we get a background. So you have uh, twelve cranial nerves, right? Nerves from the brain that goes to other parts of your body, and the vagus nerve is the tenth one, and it travels through all your major organs, through down through your vocal cord, to your lungs, to your heart, to your kidneys, to your liver, to your intestines. So basically, when there is stress in the vagus nerve, then all of these organs will also feel stress. And the reason it's connected to all of these organs is to say, okay, now we can use you guys to build our body up, to, to take out nutrition from the food that is ingested, to build different functions and structures in the body. Whereas if there is a danger, that is a secondary need, right? If there's an imminent danger to the physical body or the ego identity, which is the same in the nervous system, right? Danger to your physical body or ego identity it will be seen as the same. You can't really tell the difference then your body will say, well, we don't really need digestion. I don't really need to assimilate food because this might kill me now. So I need to harness as much energy as I can so I can mobilize either a flight, flee away from this danger, or fight that I'm combating and moving towards this danger. If your body cannot do either of these, right? So this is the adrenaline-based zone, right? The heartbeat goes up tingling, your body gets hot, you become more primal. If your body cannot flee away or fight, it's going to go into another drive. And that's essentially your brain saying, hey, I'm getting all the signals from the body, but I cannot do anything about it. So I'm going to sedate it because I can't do anything. Then it will switch from adrenaline to opioids. It will numb itself with natural tranquilizers. Now you still have the stress going on in the body, but now I'm not consciously aware of it. And if you sedate it, if you ever had sedation, you know you're calm because you're artificially, or in this case, you're naturally calm, but you're, you're, you're calm because there's opiate-induced hormones going around in your body. So your body's basically in a survival state. So it's kind of like I'm calm because I'm, my body's swimming in all of these tranquilizing agents, but that's not really the calm because I'm safe and relaxed. And that can be very hard to distinguish which one is which. And that's a big part of what we do as theory providers when we work with clients is to get them to start to understand signs and symptoms that might tell you, okay, you're calm, but you're not calm in a connected state. You're calm in a survival state. So, so let's speak to that because I think I'm, I'm really curious about like how, if somebody is in that state and they're not aware of that, is there a way that they can test for it in a sense of doing something um, to identify whether, yeah, they really could benefit from this kind of work? In terms of test, it depends on where. Well, you at. were just talking about certain symptoms that you're looking for as a practitioner yeah. as well, that is telling you that, yeah. De definitely. Mm. 
So this is general, right? Because it's it's also very, very individual for the persons. But definitely when you ask someone, what are you noticing in your body or how do you feel? And you get an answer, I don't know. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. That's usually, it's a more intellectual based state of being. I'm not really in my body or how does your shoulder feel? Hmm, I have to think about it. I have to think about how I potentially feel. So there is like an override of actually just going and connecting to different body parts. So that might be one. Also, um, the tonality when, when you're speaking, right? Like if I were to speak like this and quite monotone and not a lot of, after a while you feel like what's going on because there's no natural interaction. That can usually also be a sign of that we might be in this disconnected state um movements you know how someone is moving facial gesture Mm -hmm. tone of voice and also the more grounded you get as you continue to do this work and practice which is a big part of the training program that we do that people really get to travel through their own nervous system to to get grounded you will feel it in your body when you're trying to connect to someone if they're there or not right i'm saying all Mm -hmm. the right things but yeah it's not I'm trying it's to grab hold of something yeah, there, but there's nothing really to grab onto, right? And that will mm-hmm. indicate for you, you know, hmm, maybe something is going on. But it's important to remember there's no shame, blame, or guilt in this. This is a survival mechanism. So in terms, it's a correct behavior biologically doing this. But yeah. we can help them to notice that, okay, this was correct and this was maybe appropriate from where you used to be, but now we're carrying on this pattern, we're carrying on this behavior into into adult life or or moving forward and it starts to impair the quality of life or relationships or ability to heal and I get autoimmune conditions and I get a lot of stress, I can't sleep, I have chronic pain that doesn't go over. So then we can start to work with people to feel safe and realize what's going on and as they do, Together with the tremors, they can actually start to let all of that tension and stress out of the system and the body can feel safe enough to to ground, actually. Yeah. So do you want to give everyone a, a, you know, a brief overview of like how long a session runs for and how long they can expect to do TRE for before they start seeing the benefits of it? I mean, like I saw it in one night just because I could track that. Um, but yeah, what is your experience with that? Well, a good example was like before we went on to the podcast, you said we should really ground. That feels so good, right? And you yeah. didn't say that the first session. So already <laughs> body knows, ah, this is actually something that does good for me. Uh, my sessions usually run 75 minutes. And I do that because I work with a lot of different kind of modalities. So that was kind of the standard time that can encompass all of the things that I do. And what you can expect in the first session is get an introduction to what TRE is. We start by connecting to the nervous system and the body and explore the modality, right? To really get to connect to the body. And it's very different, right? Sometimes people shake the first time, sometimes they don't. It's it every session will be unique because you're working with your body, right? So it's not like I'm ordering a a dish from a restaurant and it will come out standardized the same way. We're working with organic tissue. So every time will be something new. And I usually say that the first four to six times is good to do with a practitioner or provider because the body will respond in different ways. And this is for you to kind of realize that it's normal, it's safe, it's natural. There's nothing strange about this. But what people usually notice is more relaxation, better self-awareness, a pause between you being triggered and your reaction, right? If you have a little bit- I of love a- that one, that's big, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's really you know where you can find your personal freedom, right? Like your trigger mm-hmm. and your reaction. If you're really, if your nervous system is very engaged and someone says something, something happens and your nervous system says it's not safe, whoop, it will react straight away. But if you can get a little bit of a pause between those two, you can start to show your brain and nervous system it's possible to do something else when i'm feeling like this when i'm in a state of being activated like this 
Um, yeah. So that's like a big red flag for everybody that's listening. If you feel like you're a reactive person, get triggered easily. You need some nervous system work. <laughs> okay. So cool. Um, all right. So I, um, I'm so grateful to you because you've offered to guide my clients through a TRE session. And that's the benefit of working with a practitioner like you is, is you're watching how we're doing this on on the Zoom session so you can identify as well if we're doing the positions correctly and, and correct can correct us. And so I, I find that very beneficial. I mean, um, we can watch recorded videos, but you don't actually know that whatever you're doing is, is the right thing. And that's why having a practitioner, as you say, is always uh, 10 times better. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm going to just say that um, we're going to be running a TRE session on Tuesday, the 13th of June at my time is 3 p.m. Central European time. Your time in Thailand will be 8 p.m. And so for the people in the U.S., it's going to be early morning. So if they do want to join, I do have still a couple of spots. Um, I've given priority to my clients. so I've let them know and I have a couple of clients that have reserved them. We can take up to how many how many people, Simba, on, on the Zoom call? It can be around 10, 12. Yeah. Yeah. So maximum 10 or 12 people so that Simba can get his eyes on what you guys are doing. Um, so if you are interested, please send me a DM. If you're in Simba's audience, please send him a message and you're more than welcome to join as well. And then why don't you now explain about for people that might be listening and also in this kind of space, practitioners, my colleagues um, that might be listening, all this nervous system work and might be interested in learning about it um, as a and, and going through this as a practitioner. Do you want to talk about that? Yes, I have a program starting October 13 and 14, and it's a year long program. And it's based in three phases. Phase one, you work through your own nervous system and really get to know the tool for your own benefits. Phase two, you learn how to work one-on-ones with others. And phase three, you work in groups. And it's all based 100% online. And it's most of it's based towards weekends or uh, pre-spoken hours, right? So people can work full-time and still do this program. And it's really a nice way of, deepening your skills of understanding how important the nervous system is in terms of connection for yourself or others so even if you weren't to work with TRE uh, per se just knowing that work having that understanding having that grounding whatever you do will actually be better because you will come from a different place within you and we also have the option of doing the module one which is a two-day uh, training 13 and 14 and that's like an immersion to really understand uh, all of the things that me and Mireille have been talking about today, the nervous system and all of these scientific terms, but you also get to experience the tremors. And so it's a mix of theory and practical exercises in this two-day uh, modality. And some people do it without continuing the full program just to kind of get an immersion for themselves and understand the tool, the nervous system, and then it can continue their practices. And you can DM me if you have any more questions about that or go to a website, livingwiththespirit.com. And there's a whole section explaining the program and how you can apply for it. And reach out to us if you have any questions. Yeah, that's really awesome. I'm really looking forward to doing this kind of work as well with you. Um, we've spoken about this. And because as you mentioned, it's just the ability to connect with our clients as practitioners on a completely different level and also to hold the space for anyone that's moving through something that's really, I don't know, triggering them or difficult. Um, my, just a case in point, you know, after the work we've done as well, my husband's been going through pretty hectic stuff emotionally and um, I can be totally grounded and not reactive and not compound what he's going through but rather neutralize what he's going through so i find it really really awesome for parenting in our relationships um with our partners as well as my work as a coach i think is it's really really re valuable it becomes less personal i would say if anyone were to take anything away from this today 
you start to understand it as an autonomic nervous system response. Sure, there is accountability and responsibility for my actions, but you start to understand there's nothing wrong with me. I'm not stupid. I'm not all of these things that we might have been told or tell ourselves. It's less personal and then it's easier to work with it, right? It's happening to everyone at different levels. Now you understand why, what you can do about it. That's the strength, I would say. Well, thanks so much. It's been great talking to you and sharing all of your knowledge. So I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> and have a great weekend for you. I'll be in your yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.